Hi, and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to look at the different data types that SumPy provides. We're also going to check out new functions and new constants in SumPy. So just a reminder, this is the third video in a series on SumPy. If you haven't watched the first and the second video, then I highly suggest to go back and watch these before starting this one. As you can see, we'll encounter quite a few functions and attributes in this lecture, but most of them are pretty self-explanatory. So let's first of all, just start by importing SumPy as SP, as usual. So I want to begin by explaining explaining why we need SumPy data types. So first of all, we can of course define a symbol. Let's call it X and recall that we could do sp.symbol pass in the string containing X. By running this cell, I've effectively made a symbol called X. Now let's form the expression X to the power one third and see what happens. So I make my expression and this is X to the power of one third like this. And again, I can run this and it works perfectly fine. However, if I print it out, then I get this. So it's definitely x to the power one third, but it looks very clumsily here because one third has been converted into a decimal number. And here I've written a few bullet points about what is really happening. So firstly, the expression one third is then evaluated to be the floating point number 0 0.333 and so on. Secondly, the SumPy symbol x is raised to the power 0 0.333 to form this output here. And involving numerics into our symbolic mathematics makes it really difficult to recognize terms. So what I want Want to do is to introduce you to the built-in data types of SumPy so that we can just get x to the one third. So to see that this can be a bit awkward, if I take my expression here, which is x to the power of 0 0.333 and so on, and then I actually take it to a new power, say one fifth, then I should get x to the one over 15 if this clears out nicely, but I get actually this thing here. So notice that it's starting to get a bit hard to recognize what this here actually is. So again, to avoid this, we'll introduce the SumPy data types, the SumPy's integer, and also the SumPy's rational number. So let's start easy. Let's just start with the integer. What I can do for the integer type is just to make my expression again, but this time I'll take x to the power of one third. And instead of hard coding in one over three, I'll write sp dot integer one over sp dot integer three. So what this does is to take the usual Python integer one and then convert it to a SumPy type integer. So if I run this, it looks, looks to be working. But now if I print it out, you can see here that it actually becomes the third root of x. So this is precisely what we wanted. And now if I take my expression again, as we did previously, and again, raise it to say the power of one fifth, I'll be careful this time and use the sp integer class. So this is one over five and print this, then I get precisely the 15th root of x. So you can see here that this is a lot more convenient than dealing with this decimal number expansions. So this is one way to kind of clear this problem. I just want to show you a bit of a shortcut. You can do this even more simply. So in fact, instead of say, let's do this step again, instead of doing this thing here, I can do expression to the power of again, sp integer of one. And instead of doing it here again, I can just do five. And again, I get exactly the same thing. We should definitely just pause here and see if we understand why this is happening. So the rule, is that if there is an operation between SumPy and a Python object, so a SumPy object and a Python object like you have here, here we have this SumPy object, and here I have a Python object, then the result will always be converted into a SumPy object. So this is kind of a general rule when working in SumPy. In this case, the result of this division here will be the SumPy rational number one over five. So this will still work. So you don't really need to provide both of them, even though that's perfectly fine as well. It's okay to just provide one of them. And just to really hammer this down, if I take sp.integer of one, then I can also just check its type with Python's built-in type function. And here you can see that this is a SumPy object, so it's within SumPy and then within the core module, numbers and then a one. But also, if I try to divide by five here, and run this, I'll still get a SumPy object. So this is still within the SumPy package and in the core module with numbers with a rational number. So this thing here is automatically converted into a SumPy rational object thingy just because one of them is a SumPy object. So this is one way you could have done this to involve SumPy's data types. The other way to do it is to just directly go into the rational type and specify that one. So for specifying rational numbers, we can just directly use the sp rational constructor. So let me make a variable called rational 
and let's set this to sp dot rational of one by three. So this here is a class constructor. What this essentially means is that we have a capitalized rational here, and we specify the numerator, namely one, divided by the denominator, namely three. So if I print this out, then we can see here that we get precisely one over three. This is not roughly one over three, like 0 0.333 and so on. This is precisely one over three. So using sp.rational is also something you can use. So let's go back to the previous example by raising something to the one third, then you can take your expression and say that it's x to the sp dot rational of one by three. And personally, I think this is even more clean just because if I now want to take it to another power, so I want to take this whole thing here, let me just emphasize here that this, this thing I want and take this to the power one fifth again, then I can just do rational of one over five. And then if I print out the expression here, I get immediately the 15th root of x. So the summary of this is that you can use SumPy's built-in data types like integer and rational to actually get the precise form you want. So this lecture is kind of two disjoint topics. The first here was about data types in SumPy, and the second is about importing constants and functions that you probably know from before. So let me start by importing some constants. A lot of the constants you use in mathematics are used over and over and over and over again. These are very convenient and very easily accessible. So for instance, we have the constant pi, and to get this in SumPy, you just write sp to reach into the SumPy module and do pi, as simple as that. Here you can see if you print it, you get it nicely formatted here, and you can now treat it like a usual number. So if I just take three times pi and print this, and I get three pi. Notice that some pi doesn't want to evaluate pi in any way. It doesn't want to say, yeah, pi is like 3.14 something. Pi is just pi. We'll later see we can actually evaluate to get a decimal number if we so want. But for now, it's really convenient that this is just three pi and not approximated by a decimal number. Secondly, we have the constant e. To get this, you could do sp dot and now a capital E to get this one. So this constant is often called Euler's number or just E, and it's very useful in calculus. And the same goes here. So if I take, for instance, a constant E and then add the constant pi, for instance, and run this, then this will just be displayed. Some pi doesn't have an intrinsic way of simplifying this because there really isn't an easy way to simplify this other than to give the decimal expansion. Then we have infinity. So infinity is also a useful concept to have lying around, especially in later parts of the series, when we'll start talking about limits or integrals with infinity in their limits and so on. To get infinity, which is kind of a funny syntax, you have to do sp.oo. The reason is that if you take two small o's here next to each other, they kind of look like an infinity sign. So if you run this, you'll get infinity. And this supports all the basic arithmetic that you would expect from infinity. So for instance, if I take infinity and plus, for instance, pi, then I get still infinity. You should be a bit careful, of course, as you always should with infinity. Say for instance, that I take infinity and then I subtract infinity as well. So if I run this, I'll get NAN, which stands for not a number. This is because you can't really determine what this is supposed to be. So arithmetic involving infinity and one finite number is typically very intuitive, but arithmetic with two infinite numbers here is often a bit difficult to discern what it really should be. And in many cases, it will then just be not a number. So we also have an imaginary unit. So for those of you who are comfortable with complex analysis, or at least have seen the imaginary unit i, then we have sp dot i. And here you can see that this is formatted as the typical i. If some of you are coming from more engineering disciplines, then in engineering disciplines, they sometimes use J as an indicator for the imaginary unit, but some pi is more closer to like math literature. So here the typical thing is to use I. So complex arithmetic is already implemented in some pi. So if I grab a whole of this imaginary unit and say, take it to the second power, like this, then I get minus one, which is the characteristic feature of I. So you don't need to like import a complex SumPy module. SumPy has complex arithmetic built in. If you don't know complex numbers or imaginary units and so on, then you can just disregard what I've said here and just move on. So these are some of the constants we'll use throughout the course. There's also a lot of functions that we need to use. So I'll just mention a few of the common functions. So first of all, it's an exponential function. And to do this, you just do sp dot exp, and then let's say we take it off x. Recall that we defined the symbol x previously. So here we have e to the power x. And with that, we can use the exponential function in expressions as well. So one thing you can check immediately is what's called Euler's identity. This is that if you take the exponential function and then take pi 
and then multiply it with the imaginary unit like this. So this is what's called Euler's identity and this is one of these fundamental identities in mathematics. So the exponential function is great to have, so is the logarithm function. So the logarithm is essentially the inverse to the exponential. So here we can just write sp.log, let's say of x again, and here you get the logarithm. So this here is what's called the natural logarithm. This means that it's the inverse to the exponential function, meaning that if I take the exponential function of the logarithm of x and run this, then I'll just precisely get x back. For some physical applications, it's more usual to use the base 10 logarithm. This is what's used in, for instance, the Richard scale for earthquakes. In informatics, it's a lot more common to use the base 2 logarithm, as this is really convenient for dealing with machine arithmetic. However, in mathematics, it's typically the natural logarithm we're caring about. So this is the one SumPy has implemented in sp.log. Finally, we also have some trigonometric functions. So we have sp.sin, which is the sine function. You can see it here. We also have the cosine functions. Let me just add it on of x. And finally, we also have, essentially we have all the trigonometric functions you can think about. So we also have, for instance, the tangent function of x. You can take a look at SumPy's documentation, link in the description, to see which functions they actually implement, but most likely every function you've ever worked with has an implementation in SumPy. What's great about this is that now our expressions can be more complicated. I can, for instance, make an expression here, say that it's x squared, that's pretty fine, plus the sine function of x, say that also it's multiplied by pi, to use a constant here, and then finally I have a final term, Let's do the exponential function of cosine of x. And now you can see here that this works. And I can also print this out easily. So now we can get more complicated expressions. And that's great because some of the things we want to do later in the course, like differentiating, integrating, and so on, this is fine for polynomials, but it's definitely more interesting for such a wide range of functions. So that's all I wanted to say in this lecture. This is definitely more of a build-up video to the later videos in the series, but hopefully it's comforting for you to see to have all of your built-in calculus functions directly in SumPy. So thanks, and we'll see you again in the next video.